Good morning, children. Welcome to the English class. So, in the previous class, we have read the story of our great Captain Clifford. I hope you have reread the story. If you haven't, please do read the story again and come back. So, if you have read the story, let's move on to the exercises. The first set of exercise is write T for true and F for false for these sentences. And these are sentences taken from the biography. Let's read the first question. Captain Clifford Nongrum went to school in Shillong. Is that true or false? Yes, it's true. He went to the Don Bosco Technical School in Shillong. Question number two. He was 24 years old when the Kargil War broke out. Is it true? Yes, he was 24 years old when the Kargil War broke out and he was serving at the Bethelic sector of the 12th Battalion of the Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry. Now the third question is, the Kargil War was fought between India and China. Is that true? No, it's false. The Kargil War was fought between India and Pakistan and that was between May and July of 1999. And question number four, Captain Nongram was commissioned into the Rajaputna Regiment. Is that true? No, it is false. He was commissioned into the 12th Battalion of Jammu and Kashmir Light Infantry. Now let's see the next question. Question number five. The Mahavir Chakra is the second highest wartime gallery award given in the country. Is it true or false? Yes, it is true. It is the second highest wartime gallery award given in the country. The first being Paramvir Chakra. Now let's move on to the next set of exercise. It is answer the following questions. The first question is, when was Captain Clifford Nongrum born? When was he born? He was born. Captain Clifford was born on 7 March 1975. Question number 2. You can note down these answers in your textbook itself. The space is provided there. Where did Captain Clifford Nongrum study? Captain Clifford studied in the Don Bosco Technical School and completed his higher education in St. Anthony's College. Question 3. How old was he when he joined the battalion? So how old was he? Captain Clifford was 24 when he joined the battalion. How do we know that Captain Clifford Nongrum was a very brave soldier? So we know that he was a brave soldier because it was only due to his valor and bravery that the Indian army was able to capture Point 0412 from the Pakistan army. In the famous Kargil War. Ignoring his own safety, he charged to the fire zone and threw grenades at the enemy bunkers. He snatched the universal position. This gave his troops time to move forward and close in. Captain Clifford was wounded but fought bravely till he finally succumbed to his injuries. Question number five. How did the country honor the bravery of Captain Clifford Nongrum? So how did the country honor him? The country honored the bravery of Captain Clifford by awarding him posthumously the Mahavir Chakra, India's second highest gallery award. Now question number six, what does the Mahavir Chakra award signify? What does it signify? The Mahavir Chakra award signifies the bravery of a soldier during wartime. Now let's move on to the next set of exercise. It is section C. Find the meanings of these words and you are given a few words there. You can note down the meanings in the textbook itself and make sure you are thorough with the meanings. The first question is battalion. What does that mean? Battalion means a large body of troops or soldiers forming part of a brigade. It is a unit of the army. The second one is valor. Valor means bravery. The third one is gallantry. Gallantry also means bravery. Fourth one is combat. Combat means a battle, a fighting, especially between armed forces. Now, in page number 24, you can see the vocabulary exercises and it's about words ending in ed and ing. Complete these sentences with the words given in the box and you are given options in the box. You have to choose the right words to fill up the blanks given in the sentences. So, let's read the first question. Not all the jokes which the comedian cracked were dash. 
Is it pleased, amusing, interested, puzzling or frightening? Which one do you think is the correct one? Not all the jokes which the comedian cracked were amusing. Second question. Yashvi doesn't find diving dash since she is a trained swimmer. So what could be the correct option? It should be frightening. So the sentence is Yashvi doesn't find diving frightening since she is a trained swimmer. The third question, I am not dash in dramatics at all. I am not interested in dramatics at all. Fourth one, Zoya was dash with the success of a ballet recital. Everyone appreciated the performance. So from among, among the options, which is the correct one? Zoya was pleased with the success of her ballet recital. Everyone appreciated the performance. And the fifth one is Robin's behavior has been extremely dash of late. No one knows why he has been behaving this way. So which is the correct option here? Robin's behavior has been extremely puzzling of late. No one knows why he has been behaving this way. So I hope you are clear with these sentences. Now the next set of exercise is about words that can get easily confused. Let's read the question. Fill in the blanks with the words given. And for question number one, you are given two choices, accept and accept. These two words might sound similar, but they mean completely different things. So the first option, the question A, please dash our invitation, said Seema. Is it accept or accept? You have to write, please accept our invitation, said Seema. And for B, I want to give away all my books, dash the one written by Enid Blyton. I want to give away all my books, except the one written by Enid Blyton. So it means I want to give away all the books other than. Here except means other than. The second question is you are given two words there. One is A-I-S-L-E and the other one is I-S-L-E. Both are pronounced I'll but for question A which is the correct option. Let's read the sentence and find out. The dash was decorated with white and red roses for the wedding. So which is the correct option there? It should be A-I-S-R-E-I. -I. You might have seen during weddings, you might have seen the bride walking down the aisle to the wedding stage. And for B, the dash was deserted. The aisle, which means an island, the aisle was deserted. Now for question number three, the options are bear, which is B-E-A-R, and the other one is bear, which is B-A-R-E. The first word B-E-A-R, bear, that means either the animal bear or to produce. So let's see the sentences and find out which is the correct option that has to be used. Question A, soon it will be autumn and the tree will be dash with no leaves. So the second bear here, B-A-R-E, that means without a covering or naked. So which should be the correct option in the first sentence? Soon it will be autumn and the tree will be bare with no leaves. There won't be any leaves on the tree. So it should be B-A-R-E, bare there. So for B, the dash loves to catch fish from the river. The bear, the animal bear. The bear loves to catch fish from the river. I hope you are clear with these questions. Now there are two more questions in the exercise. The fourth one, Dia and Dio. Question A, Anita is my dash friend. So which is the correct option there? Anita is my dear friend. And for B, we saw many dash in the national park. We saw many deer in the national park. For question five, stationary and stationary. The first word, Stationary means something that is not moving, something which is static. And the second word stationary means the different supplies that you use in writing or that you use in office. So the first question A, I would like to buy some dash 
from the store since I have an exam tomorrow. What should be the correct word here? I would like to buy some stationery which is S-T-A-T-I-O-N-E-R-Y. From the store since I have an exam tomorrow. And for question B, his bicycle collided with a dash car. His bicycle collided with a stationary car. A car which was not moving, which was stopped somewhere. Now let's move on to the next set of exercise from grammar. It's about simple, ten ten it's about simple tenses, simple present tense, simple past tense and simple future tense. So the first set of questions, question A. Complete these sentences with the simple present tense form of the verbs given in the brackets. Question 1. The train dash and in the bracket you are given the verb arrive. So the train dash arrive at 9.30 am. So the verb given here is arrive which is in its base form. You are asked to complete this sentence with the present tense form of the verb given here. And what is the present tense form of arrive? It is arrive itself. But look at the subject here, the train, which is a singular subject. So you have to use the S or ES form of the given verb. So what should come here? The train arrives at 9.30 a.m. Now question number two, the sun dash rise in the east. What should come there? The sun rises in the east. Now question three, she dash be a pianist. See the verb given here is be and it is the root form of the verb and which are the present tense forms of the verb be? It is am, is and are. So which should come here? She is a pianist. Clear? Now fourth, they dash be our neighbors and here also the verb, the root verb given here is be. The present tense form of be is either am, is or are. Since we are given the word, the subject they, which is plural, we have to use the present tense form of be as are. So they are our neighbors. Clear? And question 5. Let's wait till dash finish his food. So it is let's wait till he finishes his food. Since he came here, which is a third person singular, you have to use finishes, the S or ES form of the given verb. And question 6, the next session dash begin on Monday. So what should come there? The next session begins on Monday. Now question B, complete these sentences with the verbs given in the box. Remember to change the tense of the verbs and you are given options in the box. In this exercise, you are supposed to use the simple past tense form of the verbs given in the choice. So let's see the first question. Question number one, the movie dash on a happy note and you are given the options wash, look, speak, explain, meet, answer, see, end. Which is the correct verb that should come here? The movie ended on a happy note. See, ended is the past tense, simple past tense form of the verb end. Question number two, no one dashed the door when Rina rang the bell. So, which is the correct option here? No one answered the door when Rina rang the bell. Answered is the Simple past tense form of the verb answer. Question 3. Kanika dash her car last Saturday. So Kanika washed her car last Saturday. Washed is the past tense form of the verb wash. Question 4. He dash outside the window and dash a magpie on the window pane. So which are the correct form of words is to be, to be used here? He looked outside the window and saw a magpie on the window pane. Looked is the simple past tense form of the verb look and so is the simple past tense form of the verb see. It's like look, looked and see, saw. 
Question 5. Shruti dashed to her mother that Tito, their pet dog, had broken the vase. So Shruti explained to her mother that Tito, their pet dog, had broken the vase. Explained is the past tense of explain. Explain, explained. 6. Neha dashed her friend in the morning. Neha met her friend in the morning. Met is the past tense of meet. Meet, met. Now question C. Change these sentences from the present tense to the future tense form and rewrite them in the space given. So you are given a few sentences in this section of questions and all these sentences are in the simple present tense form. You are supposed to change it to the future tense form. See the first question. Question 1. You are happy. So the sentence is in simple present tense form and the verb here is are. And which is the root form of the verb are? It is be. So when you change the sentence to the future tense, you should be adding will or shall plus the base form of the verb. So how would it come? You are happy can be changed to simple future tense like you will be happy. Like I said before, you have to write the subject then followed by will or shall plus the root form of the verb plus object. So here root form of the verb R is be. So that we have used here and we have added will here. So it is you will be happy. Question number two, Bob drink the tea. Bob will drink the tea. If it is in present tense, you have to, you have to use like Bob drinks the tea. So that's a correction in textbook. We can write an S after K here. Bob drinks the tea. That is the correct simple present tense form of this sentence. So when it comes to the future tense or the simple future tense, you have to rewrite the sentence like Bob will drink the tea. The third question, the dog sleeps. And the verb given here is sleeps. The root form is or the base form of the verb is sleep. And when it becomes future tense, it will become dog will sleep. The dog will sleep. And don't forget to put the full stop after the uh, sentence, when the sentence ends. Now let's move on to the fourth question. They visit their grandparents. And which is the verb here? The verb here is visit. So along with the verb, we use either will or shall. So the sentence has to be rewritten as they will visit their grandparents. Now question 5. I watch TV after school. The verb here is watch. So the simple future tense form will be will watch or shall watch. So you can rewrite that as I will watch TV after school. The last one. My sister does not play tennis. So here the verb is does not play. So how will you change it? You have to write, my sister will not play tennis. Hope you are clear with these sentences. Now let's move on to the next set of exercise. It's the listening exercise and this is listening for information. Listen to the passage on Vijayalakshmi Ramanan. Write T4 true and F4 false for the sentences given. So in this question, I'll read out a passage to you. You have to listen to the passage carefully. After that, you have to write either the given sentence here. You are given five sentences here. You have to write whether the given sentence there is true or false. So first you can listen to the passage carefully. Then pause the video, finish the exercise and come back. Now let me read out the passage to you. Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Ramanan, the first commissioned lady officer of the Indian Air Force was born on 27 February 1924. Her father saved in World War I and wanted his son to join the Indian Air Force. However, her brother showed interest in joining the Indian Army. In 1955, when she lost her father, her mother and her husband encouraged her to join the Air Force. A gynecologist by profession, she joined the Indian Air Force as a short service commission or SSC officer and moved up to the rank of wing commander. 
she now remembers how she was the only lady officer in the Air Force for a very long time. According to her, discipline, punctuality, loyalty and service before self are the qualities one should cultivate in life. She is proud of the increasing number of women in the armed forces and is happy that the young generation is getting equal opportunities. So this is about Vijay Lakshmi Ramanan. I hope you have listened to the passage carefully. Now you can pause the video, finish writing whether the given sentences here are true or false. You can do that and come back. I hope you have done the exercise. Now let's discuss the answer. The first question, Wing Commander Vijay Lakshmi Ramanan was the first commissioned lady officer of the Indian Navy. Is it true or false? No, it is false. She was the first commissioned lady officer of the Indian Army. So you can write F in the space provided there. I hope you have already written that. Now the second question, her brother joined the Indian Army. Is it true? Yes, her brother joined the Indian Army. Vijay Lakshmi was an ophthalmologist by profession. Is it true? No, it's false. She was a gynecologist by profession. Question 4. According to Vijay Lakshmi, discipline, punctuality and loyalty are the qualities one should cultivate in life. Is it true or false? Yes, it is true. That was her principle. Question 5. Vijay Lakshmi is sad due to the lack of opportunities for women in the armed forces. Is she sad about it? No, that is false. She is very happy that more women are coming forward to join the armed forces. Now let's see the next set of exercise. It's the writing exercise and it's about biography writing. And what is a biography? When you're writing someone else's story in your words, it's called their biography. And if you're writing your own story in your own words, it's called an autobiography. Now, let me read the question to you. Find information about Lal Bahadur Shastri, the second prime minister of India. First, make a timeline of the major events of his life and then write his biography. So children, you can do research about Lal Bahadur Shastri online with the help of your parents. But let me share a few major events uh, in his life. You can use this as a reference for the timeline for writing the biography. You can post the video, note down, these time, note down this timeline in your notebook and use this as a reference to write the biography. You can either write the biography in the space provided in the textbook itself or you can write in your notebook. After writing, you can take a picture and send us. So we have come to the end of this chapter. We have read the story. We have done the exercises as well. So I hope all are clear to you. So that's all for today, children. We'll meet in the next class with a new chapter. Until then, bye.